Hello, this is Tom from Never Center. I'm going to show you in this video a full walkthrough of the interface in Pixel Mesh. Um, this is version 1.1.00 that I'm using here. And I'm not going to explain everything in detail, but I'm going to basically show what each of these different parts of the interface are to uh, just sort of give you an overview of everything. Um, so the first part I'll show is just this uh, new project in Open Button. So if I click on New Project, here is where I can choose um, the resolution for my project. And I choose both the pixelized resolution and the, uh, the pixel scale. And so since Pixel Mesh is resolution independent, it's going to, with these values, it'll create a 1280 by 1280 underlying high res document since uh, 128 times 10 is 1280. And uh, then it will dynamically pixelize that to 128 by 128 pixels. And so um, that's how we would create a new document there. And so you can see this resolution up here. It shows that pixelized resolution that we've set. So starting in the uh, top bar here on the right-hand side, this uh, button right here is to change the background color. So when I click on this, it highlights it in blue. And then I can use the color chooser over here to change the background color. Um, change whatever you want to uh, match your scene. Now this won't be used on export so if you want to um, export it with a background color without transparency you'll need to make a background layer which I've done here in this document where I just filled the whole layer with white. Um, so then next to that is toggling the grid display on and off. Um, and so you can see obviously when you toggle that on it will show you your pixel grid. And um, as you change the background color, it will change the color of that grid to try to make it so that it's visible, but not too in your face. Uh, let me turn that off. Moving over, next we have the resolution display um, that shows the current pixelized resolution of your document. So this is currently um, pixelized to a resolution of 253 by 126. And as I slide this slider, you can see I'm dynamically repixelizing this photo and or this image and uh, I can either use this slider or set in precise amounts here and it will pixelize to whatever I've set there and at its highest it will go to the high resolution uh, the the underlying images so this one is 1440 by 720 is what the underlying high res um, is painted at and then it's dynamically pixelized so let me uh, undo to get back to where we started with that. And then uh, right here, this, this toggles, so you can toggle between the underlying high resolution images. So this is what I've actually painted in this particular document. And then when I toggle this on, it toggles on the pixelization and the layer effects. Um, and as we go into each of these, and I'll talk about this later, you can see the layer effects there. So when it goes into high res mode, all the layer effects are off and you're seeing what's actually painted in high resolution. And then when you toggle that back on, that um, pixelizes it, does the dynamic pixelization and whatever layer effects that you have applied there. Now moving over, um, we come to the painting tools and transform tools. Um, so first right here, this is just shows the color. If I click on this, you can see it selects it again, um, like with the background color one, uh, the color of the painting tools. And so uh, this will apply to the brush tool, the mask brush tool, the pencil tool, and the fill tool. So they all use this same color that's shown right here. So if I select the brush tool, um, this will behave as you'd expect. I've got a circle here that shows my radius. I can uh, hold down Command on Mac or Control on Windows and then scroll up and down to change the radius of this. So I can paint in wide lines or thinner lines. Um, and I can change the color using any of my tools over here. Um, and I'll show you later how to uh, make this, these palette colors here. Um, and then you can, uh, so left clicking and dragging will do this freeform painting. But then if I right click instead and then let go, then I can draw out this line and then this will uh, paint in straight lines. So if I left click after starting with a right click, it will just complete that line. Uh, let me undo that. If I keep doing right click, then I can do a sequence of connected lines like that. And I can hit escape to get out of there. Um, and that will apply also to these, these other tools that I'm about to show. Um, 
And the, by the way, the shortcuts for these are shown in the tools menu here. So you can see like the brush tool is B, the mass brush tool is shift B, the pencil tool is P and the erase tool is E. So let me just paint something with the regular brush tool here. Oh, and just one other thing to note is that when I zoom in or zoom out by using scroll on the document, the brush size is relative to the screen rather than the document. So a lot of times it can be handy to like paint and then if I want to do more detailed painting, I just zoom in and then my brush size, size stays the same relative to the screen, but um, it naturally lets me uh, paint more finer details when I zoom in. Um, and I don't remember if I mentioned this, but the angle brackets on your keyboard are also shortcuts for changing the brush, brush resolution uh, as standard with sort of uh, most paint uh, programs these days. So if I just paint whatever here, um, then I'll show you what the mask brush tool does. Uh, the mask brush tool, let me choose a different color. Let's go with a little darker color. It will paint only inside of pixels that are already painted on a layer. So as I left click and start painting here, you can see that uh, even though this is going outside of those already painted pixels, it will only paint actually over what's already there. So this is really nice for like, um, if I want to, draw in shadows, for example, which I've done right here. Um, and so uh, that's the mask brush tool. And uh, a little hint secret is um, that um, you can, uh, the mask brush tool, if I highlight it, you can see that it says um, hold control while using the pencil or brush tools and that will perform a masked brush operation. So when I'm on the regular brush tool, if I hold down command on a Mac or control on a PC and I paint, then it will do that masked painting. Whereas if I don't hold it down, then it will paint wherever in the layer. Um, so that's a mask tool. The pencil tool is, it's a basically an automatically sized brush tool that will paint at whatever the current pixelized resolution is in sort of a, a one pixel wide uh, line. So I've turned on the grid here and I've got the pencil tool. And you can see as I draw, it's doing a one pixel wide line. And that's, even if I zoom out, it will do that. Um, and um, one thing to note is that that does one pixel wide at whatever the current pixelized resolution is. So if I turn off the pixelization, you can see this is what's actually being drawn in the high res mode. Um, if I turn that back on, let me undo these two lines. And then I say I, I set the pixelization much blockier. Now when I paint uh, with this pencil tool, it will paint it in one pixel wide at this blockier resolution. So the underlying uh, line is, is much wider than it was before. And just to show that, let me... Um, let me go back in here and turn up the resolution. You can see if the resolution is there, but I'm still on the pencil tool. Now it's drawing at basically one pixel wide. It's Since it's high res converted to low res, sometimes it will be uh, closer to two pixels wide. Um, but anyway, that's what the pencil tool does and it's handy, especially if you know the final resolution you're going to be working at and you want to basically draw one pixel wide lines. Then the fill tool, um, this is pretty standard. Uh, which is that um, it will just fill in whatever solid color or empty space you have uh, when you click with it. And another hint for when you're using one of the other tools is that if you hold Control and Shift while using the pencil or brush tools, then that will perform a fill. So uh, again, going back to our standard brush tool, holding down just Command or Control, depending on Mac or PC, we'll do the mask brush. And if I hold down Control and Shift or Command and Shift and click, then it will perform a fill. And then um, the Erase um, tool is pretty uh, standard, just erases, and it's the same kind of change the radius in the same way, and uh, you can erase. And again, this is has a shortcut that works in the regular brush tools, the other brush tools, which is that if you just hold Shift while painting with the regular brush tool, then it will perform that erase function. So you can do basically all of them with just this regular brush tool if you know all the shortcuts. But um, those are, uh, you can also just go into each of these tool modes individually and do that. So between all of these, 
Uh, it's quite a powerful um, drawing tool set. Now here is the transform tool, which uh, will be familiar from all other graphics programs basically, where I can take a layer and I can move it or scale it in all directions or scale it in just the X or the Y direction and rotate it like this. Now the uh, as I undo this, the extra powerful thing of course about pixel mesh is that um, this is again high resolution graphics under here and then it's pixelized and layer effects are applied so like for example these layers have an auto shade effect that um, lets me do shading on it dynamically and this outline effect so that when I translate or scale or whatever this maintains those effects and it's non-destructive and so um, I don't have to redraw this outline if I want to scale this up or down or anything. I'm just going to undo this again. Um, and so I can do cool things like uh, make a bouncy ball animation. So let's say um, I turn this on a transform keyframe. So let's put the ball up here on frame one, then it comes down. And then for frame four, maybe it squishes. And that's all non destructive and still has those layer effects applied. About like that. There. Um, so you can see how easy it is to make a lot of kinds of uh, fancy animations. You can imagine um, uh, all the powerful things you can do with this. So that's the uh, transform tool. And then uh, just the plain old pointer select tool. So this one I can still just uh, click and select layers, but it won't pull up that transform box. So if I want to click and pan, um, I won't accidentally move a layer. And uh, so that's all the tools up at the top there. Okay, next let's talk about the color chooser over here. And this is the color chooser that you'll use for all of your color choosing. So like when I click the background color, then I use this color chooser to change the background color or the paint brush color for these uh, items or one of the noise effects like uh, this effect to generate noise on a background. Um, so whatever I click on that has this blue selection around it, that is what will activate in the color picker. Uh, and the color picker has standard features like um, a color chooser, uh, which you can activate by clicking there or by pressing the I key shortcut. And um, you can enter the RGB values here. Um, one thing uh, also to note is that you can create a palette by pressing the C button on your keyboard. And that will add whatever color is currently in here into your palette. Um, and so you can build up whatever palette you want. Uh, and another thing, um, so let me add another color to this palette. So here I've got a green and a red. What if I want to create a gradient between these two? Um, I can shift select the second one here, choose create gradient, and then I choose how many steps I want it to be. Let's say five steps total. And you can see, you can see that this created a gradient um, and added these colors to my palette that will be a smooth gradation from one to the next. Um, so, and that will save with your project. Um, so that is the color chooser. Okay, next let's talk about the layer editor here. Um, this shows all the layers in your uh, document and this is pretty similar to other programs. What I'm doing right here is when I click and hold down on a layer, it isolates that layer in the viewport so I can tell exactly what's in that layer and so it hides everything else temporarily. So if I click on this grass layer, it will hide all those bushes. I'll only see the grass and that's a way that you can know exactly what's in a layer. This works with sub layers also. Um, you also notice that there's a master layer here. This is always here and this is basically just for effects. So if I add an effect like, um, oh, let's say dither, if I put that on the master layer, it will dither the whole document. And then however I modify this, it will apply to the whole document. And so that's just uh, always there. Now you'll notice in each of these um, layers, it shows the resolution of the layer. And so this is the high resolution. So if I turn off pixelization, you'll see that this native document is a 640 by 640 document. If I turn that on, it's pixelized to 36 by 36 dynamically. And when you add a layer using this plus button, the normal plus button, it adds a high resolution layer. If you add a layer using this button, 
Uh, this adds a new layer at the current pixelized resolution. So you can see I clicked that added a layer that's at 36 by 36. So let's paint, uh, let's paint in black. Um, let's paint a little whatever squiggle here. Uh, maybe let me give it a outline effect in white so it makes it clear what's going on here. Uh, now when I move this layer, you'll see it's retaining its pixel perfectness because um, when I turn off the pixelization, you can see this layer is still pixelized because that layer is natively in a 36 by 36 resolution. And so that allows me to make layers that when I, you know, translate them for animation, uh, it retains the pixel perfectness. Whereas if I did a similar layer, I'll add another one. I'm going to copy and paste those effects. Um, and we'll paint on that layer in black. Um, and I'll do a similar thing like this. And you notice when I move the high resolution layer, it doesn't retain its pixel perfectness. And when I turn off that pixelization, you can see it's actually this high res layer. And so these are useful for when you want to do um, transforms that do crazy things like rotation and scaling and stuff. And these low resolution layers are for when you want um, pixel perfect transformations uh, when you or animating or whatever. So it really depends on what your need is for each of those. And of course, there's a minus button to delete a layer and a uh, duplicate button here to duplicate a layer that I can then uh, do whatever I want with, move it, scale it, or go in and uh, change whatever layer effects it might have, uh, like the shading or whatever. So that's the basics of the layer editor. Next, let's look at the layer properties panel down here. And there are two panels you'll see down here in the animation panel and the uh, layer properties panel. And one of the main things you'll be doing down here, down here is adding layer effects. So, uh, so like if I, you can see I've got this house section layer selected right here. If I add effect, um, something like say outline, you can see it just automatically draws an outline and there are different options for outline styles um, and you can change colors and stuff like that um, or things like uh, colorize anyway I won't show all of the layer effects here but there's a lot of them and we'll, we'll keep adding more um, but there's a lot of neat things you can do with this for example with like with these windows on this house um, this is the windows layer right here you can see it's got a repeat effect on it so um, if I turn off this effect, you can see all I've actually drawn in this layer is these few pixels right here, but then I repeat it and it fills this space. And you'll notice um, it's not doing a, a full rectangular kind of um, repeat here. That's because I've got this mask to parent option clicked on that layer. And so its parent layer is this facade. Um, and this windows layer, you can see if it were not mask to parent, it would look like that. But um, when I turn on this mask to parent, it will only draw it within the pixels of its parent layer. Um, and you can see I've also got an opacity slider right here that's a pretty common thing. But you can do really neat things uh, when you stack these different effects. And uh, since they're all non-destructive, again, it can be neat um, and easy to, I don't know, do all kinds of things like, uh, say, let's put noise in here. Um, let's make this noise color a little bit more related to what's going on in these windows. You can see as I drag this noise slider up, it, it increases the frequency of that noise. And you can see also order matters here. So since I'm first doing the repeat and then I'm doing the noise, um, it's doing each window differently. If I drag this up so that the noise happens before the repeat, then the noise will only apply to that one window right there. And then the repeat will happen after that and fill all of those windows with that. So, uh, like I say, you can do a lot of really neat things with these layer effects and the opacity and the masking to parent. And this will be one of the biggest areas of um, growth as Pixel, Pixel Mash continues to grow, uh, adding a lot more layer effects. And several of these are for converting drawings or photos into pixel art. And then several of them are more standard pixel art things. There's things like mirroring and repeating. Um, anyway, uh, those are covered in a different video. But um, those are the basics of the layer panel. Now let's move on to the animation tab. 
um, down here. And uh, this controls um, the uh, keyframes and the frames of any animations that you want to make. So right now this, uh, this um, project file just has one frame. If I want to add more animation frames, I just click this little plus here. And on each of these, um, if there's a dot on the frame, that means it's a keyframe. And I won't explain all about that. Hopefully you know a little bit about keyframing. But uh, so like, for example, for this newspaper layer, um, if I make it a transform keyframe, and then come to the transform tool and move that up here, then uh, it will automatically, between those two keyframes, it will interpolate so that it can uh, move that newspaper sort of smoothly. And if I added more keyframes in between, then it would take longer uh, to do that. And just right here, you can see this adjusts the, um, the uh, duration of the animation. So if I hit this play button, what it's gonna do is it's gonna pop up this little preview window and it will just loop my animation. And uh, so like if I want these keyframes or these frames to go slower, maybe I put 0.25 seconds for each frame, and that will slow that down. Um, and in this window, this will stay on top, so you can keep this up while you're working on your document, and it will update uh, in real time. But it's just got a few buttons here, one for um, displaying your uh, project at one-to-one -one pixel ratio. Uh, this is two times, and this will fill to whatever your window size is. Um, and then you can pause it by um, pressing that play button right there. So um, anyway, it's really useful to have that open while you're working on things often. Um, coming back down here just to talk about these keyframes, um, we talked about the transform keyframe. That's just when you basically move or scale or uh, do something, some kind of transforms. Visibility will um, let you toggle visibility of layers on and off and animate those if they're keyframed. Image keyframe is for per frame images, and both of these two down here um, are for dealing with that. And let me just add a new layer up here uh, to display this a little bit clearer what's going on here. But um, basically, um, an image keyframe is uh, for when you want to have each frame show a different image. And so I could make it so that um, as this animation happens, so uh, in this layer, let's just draw Draw the number one. And then uh, since it's not image keyframed again until frame three, that, that frame will stay on there that many frames. And then two, and then I go over. And I, by the way, I can change frames by um, pressing left and right on my keyboard. And then if I make that an image keyframe there, I would make it three. So I've got three keyframes, but it goes over several images. And so that's how you can make a frame uh, an image frame lasts for more than one frame of the animation. Um, this down here, this toggle is to make every single um, one of the frames be an image keyframe. So let me just turn these off so that I've just got that number one there. If I hit image keyframe all, then it will automatically make each of these be an image keyframe. Three, four, five, and six. And then anytime I add new keyframes, since that's checked for the whole layer, it will always add a new image keyframe. And so that's uh, what you do if you want to just do sort of hand drawn um, animations where you're drawing every frame and you can copy and paste uh, keyframes into here and do all kinds of things to make that easier. Um, but those are the basics of the animation window. Finally, let's just go through some of the menu items and uh, cover anything that wasn't covered in the general interface overview. Um, uh, starting with this file menu, import image, that allows you to import a, just a JPEG or PNG or whatever into your project in, as a new layer, uh, and it will work within your existing project. Um, another interesting one here is export selected. So, like if I've got uh, this tree selected and I went to export selected, um, it's showing the, the frame width and height of the document, but export selected will actually, when it exports, it will base it on that pixel resolution, but it will trim it so the exported file is, is just the dimensions needed to include um, whatever object you have on, on the layer you're selected. So 
it can be nice for doing video game work when you draw it in the context of a full screen but then you just want to export um, the, your specific thing like say this tree um, coming into the edit menu um, I, there's uh, a handy thing here paste layer effects so when you copy layer you can just paste layer effects or just the layer transform um, resizing the project uh, these baking ones are basically where you um, you sort of rasterize the full layer and you can do it with its effects or without its effects applied uh, so that you could then say you know if, if my layer was heavily dependent on layer effects but then I wanted to edit things pixel by pixel I could bake that down and then it would bake in the effects so that they're actually drawn in the pixels and then I can go in and uh, just edit things pixel by pixel however I want. Coming to the tools menu um, again, these, these keyboard shortcuts are very handy to learn. Uh, we talked a little bit about the color palette stuff. Um, knowing the keys for adding and removing colors from the color palette are handy. Uh, next and previous color are very handy. Also, you press up and down to just go between colors in this. So this document, I have this palette. If I press down, it will just automatically go to those different layers or up. It will go backwards. Um, and so if I'm drawing within a palette, that can be a very quick way to just choose between uh, colors that I'm painting with. Uh, and you can also um, export and import just the color palette, uh, which could be handy. Uh, show preview window, That's uh, we showed this from the animation window, but it's handy also. It's just on the space bar, so you can always press the space bar to pull that up. And uh, like I say, you can keep it floating or whatever while you're working. Um, coming to the animation menu, uh, next frame and previous frame, those are very handy ones, just the left and right buttons. These onion skin options are pretty typical for um, animation software and uh, very handy. And then finally in the help menu, uh, we've got a how-to website that you can go to and sample files to download to just sort of see how you'd construct things. And then the send feedback one um, will take you to a spot on our website where they'll let you send an email to us that uh, you can give your feedback and let us know what you think, what you'd like to see added. But that's the basic overview. Hopefully this has helped, and we hope you enjoy Pixel Mash. Thanks.